People power growth, but recruiting and onboarding are expensive, exhausting, and absolutely overwhelming. I've been there and it doesn't have to be this way. Welcome to Hire and Empower. I'm your host, Molly McGrath. Join me as we interview leaders who care about their teams and distill powerful lessons from them. This show is sponsored by H&E, helping organizations to find their best hire and empower them for success. Learn more at hiringandempowering.com. Okay, listen up, my estate planning attorneys. What's the saying about funding? There's no fun in funding. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. I've heard that over and over and over again, especially in this day. I, I don't know about you, but every estate planning law firm that I speak with absolutely record year growth since 2020. And guess what? That's not stopping. I, I've been saying over and over again, you probably heard me say this a million times on my podcast. Yay, finally, estate planning attorneys are getting the, the platform. COVID brought awareness to that. So often I'd hear, oh, estate planning attorneys, it's boring law, blah, 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 from my criminal defense attorneys or PI or what have you. Now I get phone calls from burnout litigators saying, hey, how do I get into this estate planning stuff? I think that's true. That is true. So I'm so excited to have attorney Mike Rakowski here today. I am going to, I cannot wait to share because so often I will get phone calls. Hey, do you have anybody who's figured out funding? Do you have any back office solutions for funding? And finally, 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 we are going to be talking about funding and we in particular, I'm going to be sending y'all, you can pull it up right now for those of you that aren't jogging or cooking dinner or out driving kids around trustfunding.com. It's going to be in the show notes as well. So Mike, thank you for having a passion for funding and figuring out the solution and giving us all a place to go to. Tell us a little bit about your practice and your backstory. Yeah, absolutely, Molly. Thanks for having me. And you know what was really fun when you just said that is for years when I'm talking about my law firm, I always have to spell my last name. And when you said trustfunding.com, like who doesn't know how to spell that, right? I don't have to, <laughs> the first time ever, I don't have to spell the website name. Well, just a so little that, little history of me, although I'm 100% Irish and I grew up in an Irish Catholic family, I also grew up in a Polish neighborhood. <laughs> oh, there we go. There we go. So we got some time. Perfect. And my Perfect. favorite yeah, food uh, is pierogies. <laughs> uh, nothing better. Nothing better. So I'm half Polish, half Italian. So I got like both sides going. It's, it's incredible. <laughs> it's incredible. But a little backstory on me. Um, started in the uh, estate planning space about, I don't know, 13, 14 years ago. I've been growing in estate planning practice uh, till this day. And I, uh, we've always done funding as part of our process which as everyone on this call knows or listening to this podcast is that the funding can take twice as much as the process before it, right? From Mm. intake to initial consultation and whatever your design process looks like to signing, sometimes it can be twice, if not longer, the amount of time that we spend following up with institutions, gathering the the information. And so, but one day I was, uh, you know, kind of just, working through my day and it kind of just hit me. I'm like, there is no real solution out there for anyone to assist people with the, with the funding process. Because in running my estate planning practice, we're meeting with families all the time that have had documents drafted by other attorneys and they come to us, we go over maybe the changes they want to make, the updates. And then we get to the part of the process where we talk about, you know, what is in your trust? And Every time it's like a deer in headlights, like, what do you mean? What's in my trust? Uh, You know, I paid this money to have this done. Isn't everything in my trust? And the typical process, as we know it is, attorneys draft legal documents and then they pass it on to the client to do their work, right? It's on them. You know, we provide great instructions, but it's on them to eventually get their assets over into the trust to make sure this all works. 
Yeah. And we know how many clients do that, right? Right. (laughs) Very little. It's overwhelming. It's confusing going, fighting with the financial institution. I would say funding, I'd say 80% of it is babysitting and following up and chasing information. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't agree with you more. So, you know, we've kind of mirrored our, the, the process that we've been doing forever with our clients on the law firm side, we don't actually work with any clients that don't do the funding with us. So, you know, we've just developed this long list of the institutions that, you know, the ones that are a little bit harder to work with and the ones that we need their specific forms. And we've had all this great information that we've compiled over years and years. And I'm like, you know what, we need to bring this to the masses. We need to, we need to help those attorneys who see the value in funding, but either don't want to staff it or just don't want the headache themselves help them, but then also consumers as well. If if you've had a trust drafted by another attorney and you just want help, you know, crossing the finish line, you know, we can be there to help. Well, there's one thing with the staffing, finding people. It's very difficult to find people that have experience in this area of law, number one. Then, you know, you have to go through the whole hiring phase and you have to go through the onboarding phase and you have to go through the training phase, but then retaining them, you hire, train them, get them up to speed, get them on board, and then they leave. And there you go again. I just was speaking with a firm this morning that um, I serve as their fractional CEO, and we're looking at their case management and, and the morning meeting and the backlog and funding is unreal, unreal. So I'm like, give the work, hiretrustfunding.com. And not only that, but this is crazy. The firm's telling me, all right, so they accept a retainer, then they collect the final fee when the documents are signed, sealed, delivered, what have you. They're not scheduling signing dates because the clients aren't getting them all the information so they can fund the trust. So they have documents that are sitting out there forever because the trusts aren't funded because they're still waiting on the clients to get the documents. So it just becomes... A, a backlog number one, but number two, I'm like, guys, I just want to remind you, you're sort of out of integrity with the clients right now because you made a promise to them and you're waiting on them. Is anybody following up with them? Are you reminding them that you're not protected? Dad has a heart attack tonight, or you know, mom gets hit by a snowplow or what have you. You have no planning in place right now because right. you have all these documents sitting out there that you're waiting on funding and they're not getting you the information because they don't understand the information and they're completely overwhelmed and paralyzed. And that's why they came to you as the experts. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, and I, I, you know, I know we all want to do it, but it can definitely complicate the process if we don't have good processes and systems in place to make sure that it happens. And, you know, it's all about setting expectations too. If, if your firm does funding, you know, we need to be talking about that from the outset because prep them for needing to gather, you know, the documentation required to do and finalize the funding part of it. Yeah. I always tell my clients and like, this, how you, you start it in the beginning. You don't wait to start gathering the information at the signing meeting and then have a whole nother funding meeting and what have you tell them right in your intake. Here's the deal. I want you to come in here. You're scheduled for your design meeting. I want you to bring the shoebox of anxiety with you. Throw all the documents. Everybody knows this from baby boomers. They saved everything in a shoebox from, they mm-hmm. went to Tom McCann and got their shoes and never threw out the shoebox. That's what they use for the filing system. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. So, I'm dating myself a little bit here, <laughs> but bring the shoebox of anxiety right now. Right. And then from there, you can start to put it into a funding table or asset summary or whatever your term of art that you speak of. Can you share with us, Mike, from your practice, building a successful practice, how you finally cracked this code and figured out funding and how to get the clients to do what they need to do? Yeah, I think, you know, it's it's everything that you're talking about. It's, it's setting the expectation from hmm. the beginning, um, not only just what is going to be required of them to work through the process of putting in place an estate plan and funding it but prepping them for the the information and documents needed because 
if you go through the process and then at the end, after they sign, say, you know, now we're going to need this, this is where you're going to get a huge backlog of, of, of files that are in funding, right? Add to that, as business owners, once we've been written the final check, there's just something different that happens when we're not trying to earn that last uh, half of our, you know, agreed to fee when we sign the document. So it's taken really years to, to figure this out on how soon we need that documentation. But, you know, in our estate planning practice, we go from, you know, initial consultation to design to review and signing. And we are hitting that every time. So we actually require that all their funding information come to us at the design meeting. Hmm. And then that way, when, you know, what's the 80, 20 rule, right? 80% yep. are going to come with it done, 20% are not. So then that gives us just a little bit more time to get that information by the time, you know, two weeks later when we're signing the plan, but we're setting that expectation from the outset. Um, we're providing them with the, our funding, internal funding questionnaire right away so that they're prepped, that they're going to need this information. And it's just setting expectations and communication. I think, I think that's, that's just been the key because we, you know, we don't want a, a huge backlog in our funding process. Just, you know, just doesn't do well for us. So you've finally cracked the code in your own law firm and you got your firm to a place where it could operate without you. You're fully a visionary. You're fully an entrepreneur. So you have a very successful law firm and you're in where in Michigan? So we're in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, kind oh, of beautiful. Southeast, Southeast Michigan, 45 minutes north of Detroit. Great. And how big is your practice? How many people do you have? Yeah, so we're growing currently. We're at like 16 and we're uh, still onboarding a couple. We're looking to add about two more this year. Uh, and it's been a wild ride. I mean, as with everyone else through COVID, you know, pre-COVID, we were doing six to eight presentations. We had five, uh, a month. We had five offices spread out all over the state. COVID hit and we pivoted to a completely virtual model. And we actually haven't gone back yet. We are, uh, our goals are to stay 100% virtual for uh, indefinitely. And, I, and and that's all just, I like, I have three daughters. I know, start saving for weddings in college. I get it. <laughs> um, but, but my goal is to, I want to be here with them in the morning. I want to be here when they get off the bus or just available for them. So everyone on our team has just absolutely loved working from home. We have employees spread out all over the country now. Got a, got one near you out in Colorado, and um, it's just it's just been absolutely amazing. So we're gonna we're gonna keep it going as long as long as we can. It's been just a wild ride, but love Five it. Five offices, and then you had to pivot. You were forced to. So you heard the calling. You answered it. You didn't resist it. You didn't fight it. And then you're all shut down. Nobody's in mm -hmm. office. You're virtual. And you're, you as a true entrepreneur, as a true visionary, get deeply curious and figure out, whoa, look at all the overhead I'm saving. Look at all the time travel that I'm saving for the clients even. You know, how yeah. many people would, I bet you, I would bet you to guess your cancellations and reschedules drastically. You're not dealing with driving to your signing appointment in the middle of a Michigan winter. Yep. And I mean, look at the efficiency and effectiveness right there. Yep. You know, I, I talk to so many estate planners around the country all the time, and they're all so curious as to how we keep doing it. And I really think there's just a mindset thing here because, you know, when you offer in-person or virtual, a lot of people will take you up on the in-person, but we don't even offer it. And the next thing you know, as soon as someone has one meeting, they're like, that was so amazing and easy. I'm excited to move forward. And then they tell, we actually get more referrals to our law firm because we're virtual, because the, everyone's talking about it. They're like, oh, I met with my lawyer online. It was so cool. And then next thing you know, their friends are coming in. So, I, you know, everyone try, they say they can't do it, but I really think there's just some mindset, a little, you know, perspective that needs to change on it. It's just been great for us. And, and I don't see going back. I love it. And I think what I hear from estate planning attorneys so often is they get overwhelmed by 
getting documents and getting information, trust administration, probate and funding by and large. And how are we going to handle the signing meetings in a virtual setting? How are we going to handle the funding information in a virtual setting? You figured it out in your law firm, and I'd love for you to speak on that and how you figured out. I see a massive need. You travel all over the country to conferences and talking to estate planning attorneys constantly and probably at the at the cocktail receptions, at the breakfast events, hearing from people about funding, what there there's, it's the biggest breakdown in the firm yeah. and, and it's also a need. And you, you once again, heard the call, took it as an opportunity. We figured it out here in our law firm. So let me go and create a passion project for other law firms to be able to support them. How do you deal in this virtual s- setting, especially with trustfunding.com of getting information, especially when you're working with law firms all over the country now? Yeah, no, that, that is a great question. So, you know, the, the easy answer is, is when someone's tech savvy, you know, uploading digital documents, simple, you know, like s- someone who's tech savvy can go to their institution, they can download statements, they can send them to us. That's the easy part. The not so easy part is, is maybe when working with the senior population that's not as tech savvy, and so one of our core values is the Disney experience. And so we're always trying to, like, from the customer experience, how could we make this really simple and easy? And so we tried it all, but something that works really well is we mail out empty boxes, empty UPS boxes that are already pre-labeled with a scheduled pickup. Oh. And so all someone has to do is they, they get this empty box, they put their stuff in it, they put it right back on the porch, and it's scheduled for pickup the next day already. And people just love it. It just makes it so simple for them. Yes, we've tried having people um, drop off things at the office. Well, we don't want anyone there, but we were trying that for a little bit. We've sent people to people's houses to pick it up. But the empty box thing has just been like one example of, you know, if you're forced to figure out a way, that's a really good way. And people, again, they love it. They think it's such a great customer service touch. So like, wow, this law firm sent me this empty box. How cool. It's already scheduled to be picked up. So I don't have to go to the UPS, you know, drop box down, you know, in town or whatever. Um, so that that's just been one example of, you know, trying to really think through how could we make this as easy as possible for people. And as you're saying that you human beings want to be told what to do and when to do it by. So I love the scheduled pickup because they, it's not like you're sending just an empty box. Oh, fill it out whenever you want. No, no, no. no. We know when we get that box back. (laughs) Yeah. So I love it because you are really managing the entire funding process. If you say, okay, great. It's getting picked up tomorrow at 8 a.m. They're going to be prepared. They're going to get all their documents and dump them in the box and make sure that they don't want to disappoint you. They know it costs money. They know it costs time. And they're respectful of that. Yeah. Yeah. And something very similar we did on like the execution of documents because, you know, a lot of people are asking this as well. Well, during COVID, it was great. We were working under an executive order that we could notarize documents on Zoom. Wow, that was amazing. And I really hope it comes back. I truly feel like that was a better way anyways, but we can't do that in Michigan anymore. So now what we do is we have a network of mobile notaries that we just schedule to appear uh, magically uh, (laughs) right after the review and signing is done. They know it's happening. Again, this keeps the process moving because it's not like okay, do the review and signing and then go to your bank and whenever it's convenient for you, get the documents notarized. No, we, we have it all scheduled. Uh, we actually train the notaries so that they know where to execute the documents. They have witnesses that they bring with them if they need witnesses for depending on what the document is. And so if we've got a, you know, uh, a Zoom review and signing scheduled at 1 p.m. on a Tuesday, the mobile notary is showing up at 2 p.m. right after the right after the signing. And so that works really well. Um, and it's yeah, it's it's a way to get things signed. Wow. Oh, so tell us how you're running right now your national trust funding company, same way that you did with your law firm. Are you duplicating it? Yeah, so we're trying to implement as many um 
customer service touches as we can. So, you know, the empty box thing, if that's, if that's the way we're going to do it. And it depends on, um, you know, where they come to us in the, in the process. But a lot of times the more tech savvy, you can upload doc, you know, the certificate of trust, the trust, your documents, we have them fill that all out uh, digitally, which is really nice on a very secure portal. You know, this is where everyone wants to make sure that this information is the most secure, right? Because you're giving up your bank account information, you're giving up institutions, social security numbers. So it, we have it on a very secure portal if that's the way we're doing it, or we have a paper financial questionnaire that we can do the same thing. You know, we can UPS overnight something that has a return label, they can fill it out and send it right back to us if, if that's what makes the most sense. So yeah, I mean, it's just, we're duplicating the same ideas that we came up with on the law firm side over on the trust funding side. So tell our listeners a little bit about, you know, how they can, I know there's two different ways that they can work with you. Number one, you're do it all. You're, you, they send uh, their clients right to you and their partnership with you. Another is that you can work with them in-house. Tell them a little bit more about what that looks like. Yeah, so we can actually do it a couple of ways. We can work directly with consumers. So if someone had a trust, you know, done anywhere, they can find us online, you know, just like anything else. Uh, we're also partnering with estate planning firms to kind of be their back office to to do these documents because we all know how important it is. We just want to make sure that, you know, we're completing it for the clients. Yeah. Um, and it just depends on, you know, how the attorney wants to handle it. We prefer controlling, you know, controlling the communication with the clients to make sure that, because we all know how much work it is to constantly follow up on these things. So we want to, you know, hands-free take this off the attorney's plate so they can go out and get more business do more design and, and signings and things that are their highest value. And we can kind of take this paperwork off of their plate. Absolutely. And that's an ideal. I'm thinking of you. That's one of the biggest reasons they would want to work with you. So you could take all the communication, everything off their plate, right? Yeah. Yeah. They can just turn it over to us. We will do the follow-up. We're going to provide them updates with where they're at in the funding process. And I think it's just, it, it should give any of the estate planning firms just like a sigh of relief. They can take a yes. deep breath and they can know that their clients are going to, any of goals that they were trying to accomplish, whether it's probate avoidance, asset protection, you know, we're going to get all of that done for them. When you talk about the Disney experience and this white glove customer service, I would assert I, I will, I'll talk to firms all the day. How, how often is, what's the average life cycle of your funding matters? I'll hear 18 months. Oh. I'll hear 12 months. I'll hear. Yeah. Talk to us a little bit about you that, being in control over yeah. communication, setting these expectations, the box is coming, the pickup is there. What, what do you see for the average life cycle of a funding case? If you manage and navigate it? Yeah, great, team. great question. And you kind of just made me sick in hearing that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, usually, usually it's about four to eight weeks. It doesn't take us long at all to prepare the documentation that the clients need to sign. We can turn around that about a week or two. And then it's the follow-up really with the institution. So we all know that we've prepared, if you've ever done funding before, you know that you've prepared right. some kind of account change information that you've sent to the institution for them to just sit on it and they don't do anything with it. You know, financial advisors, um, as, as much as oh, we love them, yes. you know, they're managing a lot right now. And a lot of times just the changing of account stuff kind of falls to the bottom of the list. So we got to make sure that we're following up with them, that they're doing the suggested changes. And so usually it's about, you know, a couple of weeks to get all the documents signed. And then we're in constant follow-up with the institutions to confirm that everything has been changed so that we can prov provide that confirmation to the clients. Friends, did you hear that? Four to six weeks, four to six weeks. I That alone, for you to get this off your plate, because at the end of the day, what is waking you up at two o'clock in the morning? It's that your clients' trusts are not funded. Yeah. And and I can tell you this, um, 
you know, in the law firm, when we meet with families who thought it was funded, but then realize it's not, makes for a, a not so happy client. And so, absolutely, you know, keeping our clients happy is part of the plan too. Yes, absolutely. All right, Mike. So how can our listeners reach you? Trustfunding.com. For those that are out jogging, those are out exercising, making dinner, whatever it might be. I'm going to give you the phone number, 248-971-2863. So when they call, can they, they'll schedule a consultation with you? Yep. They'll either schedule a consultation with me, or you can go to the website that I don't need to spell, trustfunding.com. And right there, you can (laughs) you can click a link to book a, a meeting with me and we can kind of go over everything and the relationship and how it would work. Absolutely. There's also a button here that you go ahead and email and blogs that you can subscribe to as well to hear more about the process. So get this off your plate, attorneys. If you want to have a law firm like Mike has built where you have you've virtually removed yourself from a law firm, right? I have, yep. So now, now we're in a, a different seat now, which is great. The visionary seat. Yeah. Yeah. For all those that run EOS. Yes, we, absolutely. We five offices, five physical offices down to zero, other than I'm sure you have a location for mail in your Google AdWords. We have one and it's all subleased out to another law firm. Oh, how Whoa. Yeah. All right. There's... Zero, we, have, we have zero overhead. That's a, there's an entrepreneur for you. (laughs) Love it. Love it. So if you, I know I hear from you all, how do I get freed up? How do I get free from the conference room? How do I leverage my support team? What have you? There's, I can't find good funding people. I can't keep good funding people. Funding is the bane of our existence. You no longer have an excuse. So the next person that calls me or I talk to and you're bitching about funding, I'm going to tell you, I'm ending this conversation and go <laughs> talk to Mike because now it's his problem. There we go. <laughs> Love, it. Love it. Make it my problem. I'm good at that. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for listening. Continue to be legal leaders, leading legal leaders. And by always, always, always leave us a review, leave us your comments and share with your friends and family. Molly, thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. We've reached the end of another impactful conversation on the Hire and Empower podcast. Whether this was your first episode or you're a longtime listener, I know you can tell I have passion for people. Whether you're a business owner, employee, executive, or hiring manager, I understand the situation you're in. Hiring, onboarding, and leadership is expensive, exhausting, overwhelming, and if that's not enough, it's also time-consuming. My friends, it doesn't have to be this way. There is a team at H&E that has your back. For over 25 years, they've transformed over 4,000 law firms into efficient, effective, profitable assets for their business and made it fun to come to work again. Check out our Smart Hire Solution, our Employee Leadership Program, and the 66-Day Law Firm Turnaround at HiringAndEmpowering.com. This episode is being sponsored by Legal Ease Marketing. Listen, law firms have many ebbs and flows, and we tend to see this typical pattern. When things around the office are slow, lawyers get better at following up. But when the bustle is back, they tend to drop the ball. What if you had a system in place that not only automated follow-ups, but could guide potential clients seamlessly through the intake process and beyond? The team at Legal Ease works with your firm to create a custom pipeline of emails, text messages, and follow-up calls sent to your leads when you want them to be sent. Whether it's a consultation confirmation email sent a minute after the request goes through, long-term nurture emails sent six months later, a request for Google reviews sent to the most opportune times. They put a system in place that improves your client experience while taking tasks off of your plate. Or maybe you're already rolling in a software or CRM, but it's not set up as you want. Or perhaps you know you could be maximizing your automations more. Sometimes it's hard to tell what you need 
without a deep dive into your account. That's where Legal Ease audits and analysis come in. First, their team will learn everything about your processes and how you intend them. Then they'll go through your automations and map out the needed changes. Lastly, you'll discuss a plan forward and how to make your optimized office a reality. Legally's team pushes the boundaries of what automation can do to help your firm operate in ways you think were possible. Don't let potential clients slip through the cracks by not following up with them. Schedule a consultation today with Legally's Marketing. They look forward to helping you create more time, consistency, and your KPIs. To learn more, go to legalesemarketing.com and book your free consultation call today.